For the past three years, I have used the Linksys WRT54GL as the primary router in my home computer network. I liked the 54GL for its fantastic support of third-party firmware, such as the Tomato firmware, which sports a feature-rich web interface. Over the years, however, my demand for network throughput gradually increased, and the limitations of the 54GL with its wireless G connection and 100 megabit LAN quickly became clear. I began searching for an alternative router that would still be compatible with the Tomato firmware, and I found such a router in the Netgear WNR3500L. In this episode of Tech Report, I will show you how to install the Tomato firmware onto the Netgear WNR3500L. The WNR3500L was first manufactured in 2009. The router sports 8 megabytes of flash memory, 64 megabytes of RAM, and a 453 megahertz Broadcom processor. The router also has 2.4 gigahertz wireless N, one USB 2.0 port for sharing uh, external hard drives, and four gigabit LAN ports. Most importantly, the WNR3500L is marketed as an open source router which means that the manufacturer fully expects consumers to load third-party firmware on it. With this open source designation, I assumed that the third-party firmware offerings would be plentiful, and I was not disappointed. Over the course of this guide, I will be showing you how to install version 7500 of Toastman's Tomato firmware onto your Netgear WNR3500L. Uh, keep in mind that there are plenty of other firmware options available, such as OpenWRT, DDWRT, and even other builds of Tomato, if you don't happen to like the build that I'm using in this video. Once you have Tomato firmware loaded on your router, it's a pretty simple matter to upgrade to a different type of firmware. The procedure that I followed is a little bit obscure, and it involves loading DDWRT onto your router before loading the Tomato firmware. The reason for loading DDWRT onto your router first is that the default Netgear operating system that is loaded on your router by default requires firmware files to have a .chk file extension, and I have yet to find a tomato distribution that's compatible with this router which has a .chk file extension. DDWRT, on the other hand, offers a build of the operating system that is in the correct format for flashing directly from the Netgear web interface. So using the Netgear web interface makes the entire process a lot simpler. Once you have DDWRT loaded on your router, it's a simple matter to use the DDWRT web interface to load up Tomato or your, another firmware distribution of your choice. Start off by downloading the, quote, special file for initial flashing from the DDWRT router database or from the link at the bottom of your screen. Next, download build 7500 of Toastman's Tomato from the link at the bottom of your screen, or your own firmware of choice. Once you have assembled these two files, you may proceed on to the next step. Start off by setting a static IP of 192.168.1.2 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 uh, on the Ethernet port on your computer that you're going to be flashing the router from. I would re recommend disconnecting your computer from all other networks, wired and wireless, while performing the firmware upgrades. Next, connect one of the LAN ports on the Netgear router to the LAN port on your computer. Plug in the router and wait about 45 seconds for the system to fully boot up. Open up a web browser on your computer and type 192.168.1.1 in the address bar, and you should be presented with a login for the Netgear web interface. Use admin as the username and password as the password and you should be in. Once you have entered the Netgear web interface, navigate to Router Upgrade under the Maintenance category in the left hand sidebar. Click on the Browse button and navigate to the location of the DDWRT firmware. Click Continue at the first prompt and Yes at the next one. After that the DDWRT firmware should automatically be loaded onto the router this took about two minutes on my particular model. After the firmware upgrade has successfully completed, the router should reboot, and you'll know that the reboot has finished when the power light on the front panel becomes green. Once the power light is green and the router is ready to go, 
uh, open up Internet Explorer and navigate to the IP address of the router. It's important that you use Internet Explorer in this step as I tried performing the firmware upgrade using Firefox and it failed every time. After you have loaded the DDWRT web interface, click on Administration and then Firmware Upgrade. Click on the Browse button and navigate to the Tomato firmware file you downloaded in the previous step. Click on the blue Upgrade button and let DDWRT work its magic. Wait for the router to reboot, and when the upgrade is complete, type 192.168.1.1 into the address bar of a browser of your choice. You should be presented with a password and username prompt, enter root as the username, and admin as the password, and you should be into the Tomato web interface. Congratulations, you now have Tomato loaded on your WNR 3500L. In this guide, I've shown you how to install the Tomato firmware on your WNR 3500L open source router. Hopefully, after following the steps outlined in this guide, you too have Tomato or some other open source firmware loaded on your router and can begin to enjoy some of the benefits of third-party router firmware.